What's up guys? Uh, I'm so glad that you guys are coming to check this video out. Hopefully you have already checked out sort of the first episode of this little two-parter thing we got going on um but honestly i want to give you that chance like if you came to this video and you're like hey i have not checked out this this guy yet i need to kind of figure out what it's like to uh, be creative in ministry and hate like photography and trying to find photos or videos and all that stuff and use them for ministry to help people understand where we're at whatever and uh this is your first like getting to know what we're going through and uh, you're actually asking okay well what camera should I buy you should go watch the other video I'll link it in the description on here um, but don't start here this is this is the version two of what's going on with this um, because honestly I think one of the things that comes with this is that we can get lost in this idea of what should I buy what what is the best out there what's all that stuff um, and uh, yeah it's just not no don't don't watch this don't watch this first go watch the other one first I promise you gone did you did you go no really go back and watch the other one it's, it's in the description go watch it it's okay it's better I promise um, now now that all those people are gone welcome to lay camera description understanding what I use and if it's worth you using and um, yeah we're just gonna start there we're gonna yep yeah, we're gonna do it all right so here's the deal um, I told you guys in our in that last video hopefully you watch that one first um, that I like my camera system things are good it's it is good I like it and it's very usable and cheap and yeah but also I told you that I would probably buy something different had I gone back in time and, and fixed all that stuff. Um, is it wrong? No. Is it um, worth going and buying a new camera body and doing all that stuff? Not really. Um, yeah. So there's 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 two two parts to that. There's two things that you need to understand about why it's like that. Okay, so we're gonna reverse back time. It's 2023, right? Things are good. Um, been doing this for a couple years now, and uh, I've had a had a camera body to use for a couple years now. And um, before that, I was super glued into using my phone and doing all that. And um, it was actually pretty good doing that, right? And that's kind of why we talked about that before. And I still use my phone for a lot. I have a, um, a phone gimbal that I use sometimes for reels and stuff, and it's all it's all good, all all good things, right? Um, but along with that, um, here's a little backstory, right? Back in 2020, we all remember what happened. 2020 um, had our good old COVID friend come through and uh, change how things roll and um right before covid hit like literally probably like the week before covid i bought an entire camera system because we were supposed to be going on a mission trip and um literally obviously the, the trip got canceled and all that stuff but but um so honestly just by straight up like god's provision uh, before cameras were all bought up and it was really hard to get microphones and all this stuff and blah 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 um we already had a camera, we had lenses, we had all this stuff, and um, all I had to buy all of that stuff, um, the only knowledge that I had at the moment was the fact that my wife was a photographer and she had a Nikon D7200 that we had bought for her for a while, and um, you know, she's great, like wedding shooter and stuff, and um, it's like super down with okay I know how to use Nikon cameras because she had shown me and um, so I got got to working on all that stuff got to figuring it out and all that stuff and so um, as I was doing my research and stuff I found out that Nikon had just gone into the um, mirrorless realm and so one of the things that I grabbed was the Nikon Z50 and it was the APS-C part of their mirrorless lineup and um, honestly I think that's that's probably one of the main things that it, like if I could go back and be like a little ca camera purist person whatever um, 
I think I would like to have a full frame camera. Um, is it that big of a difference? Like, does anyone know based off of looking at my images? No. Does anyone like think less of it? No, definitely not. Especially because most of what I do on there, other than like photography, specific things like most of what I use it for is for video and it does video at 4k with 30 frames it, it, it doesn't it it doesn't matter after that honestly for me personally and um, you know autofocus is actually pretty good um, they've done a couple of updates on the autofocus and it's been really great and um, at the end of the day, I think I, I learned something really great about this um, that really like changed the way that I see camera bodies and like why it wouldn't be worth buying a new one if that makes sense. Um, and so yeah, here let me I'm gonna show you the goods right. So this is my Z50, right? It's all pretty much always on this little mounting plate, right? But um, Z50 is super super small, right? And so let me let me show you actually. Look how small this camera body is. Do you see that? This thing is tiny, so dang small, and. Um, that sensor, that little baby, that little baby sensor in there looks so small, <laughs> especially because they have the, like it's, it must be like machined, like for the Z6 and Z7 at the same time, um, because you can see where like the full frame sensor would fit. <laughs> So it's a little a little painful to look at that sometimes, but um, always rocking the the Nikon little Z ring that they have because um, Z lenses are expensive for no reason. It's so dumb, right? They're like literally like the same same glass and all that stuff, and it's just like literally just a difference in connector. L literally the only difference is those those metal pens right there, and so. Um, I just decided that I don't I don't want to do that so nope so pretty much always use this little guy there's probably a cheaper um, lens ring out there somewhere too but um, I actually got this kit probably I think it was for like when it was brand new it was like a thousand um, I think like this just with the, the F to Z FTZ ring um, I think it was a thousand dollars and now you can get this kit together for probably like 700 or 800 something like that because now they have um there's a z the z5 which is an even smaller mirrorless guy um and um which i definitely would not buy because that's like i don't know it's just it loses a lot of the functionality of this like this is truly probably the the prosumer model of that right like it's 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 like the dink around take on vacation model of prosumer cameras um for them and um and i think the the secret is that for this it's it's usable because you can know what to do with it and get a lot more out of it than what it was probably intended for. Um, and so um, with this, pretty much like 90% of the time um, when I'm shooting, especially because like, and we've talked about this a little bit on the channel, is that the idea is that we're shooting for the moment, right? And to be able to capture what's going on in our ministry, what God's doing in our midst, right? And so um, because of that, a lot of times like I'm either off stage shooting on stage or I'm like in the moment, like trying to get pictures of people being there, right? Um, and outside of doing photography, I'm almost 90% of the time doing video stuff, right? Like this, this is actually on my phone anyway. Um, looks pretty darn good for being just on my phone's front facing camera. 4K, 30 frames, iPhone 14 Pro Max. Not bad, um, but 90% of the time I'm shooting with this, and with this guy, right? This is a Sigma 50 1.4, right? And um, let me tell you, this combination taught me 
that glass is king. And I think that is one of the things that comes down, like down the line on photography, that people make m the mistake of of buying a camera body because people say it's good and that the camera body is like going to make the difference. And sometimes that is true. Let me, let me explain what I mean by that. So sometimes like if you have a volunteer facing ministry that like, like you, everyone that touches your camera is going to be volunteer and they're not going to know how to use, they're not going to have time to practice how to use a camera and something like that. Um, people are going to mess up. Right. And, um, as far as like, like if someone didn't know what they were doing with photography, I would not want to hand them this mostly because the autofocus and all that kind of stuff, it's not perfect. It's good. It's really good actually for, for what it is. Um, but if you don't know how to manipulate it and you don't have time to practice how to use it, you're going to miss out. And uh, not only are you going to miss the moment, but your photos are just, they're just not going to be as good as they could be, right? For somebody who maybe has an eye for what they're looking for, but is not very practiced with the system, right? Um, so most of the time, like if I had a system like that and I was going to, or like a ministry like that, where I had a volunteer who I was going to hand a camera to, and you do that kind of stuff. Um, um, personally, I really like Sony's autofocus system that they have. It's really, really good. It's quick, and um, like one of the someone, at, one of my friends, um, and actually you might even be watching this, but um, good, good friend of mine has this um, A7 III that I was able to kind of play with a little bit at an intern academy retreat, which um, hopefully you guys will probably see a little bit of that while I'm there this year, but. Um, when I got to play with that and kind of, kind of look at the autofocus, I think that is probably um, hands down the part of that camera that, like, if I could, if I could take that and put it into this, and, and maybe that bigger sensor on the inside, um, that would be huge. That would be awesome. Um, one of the reasons why is because when you're looking through the viewfinder on the A7 III and you're using the autofocus, it will actually like completely outline what is in focus in your image, right? And so um, there's no guessing game. There's no like, oh, let me, it's gonna do eye focus or whatever, it does both, right? And so um, that's one of the things that the Nikon stuff does really well is does um, focusing on eyes and it even does animal eyes, which is, huge right um not that that really even matters for ministry but whatever it finds an eye in the photo focuses on that person or that thing right and so it's really great for ministry stuff too because most of the time we're trying to catch people like not just looking at us but just in general in view and so um like i said it's not perfect it's not the biggest thing in the world but most of the time that's not going to be the case right like you're like if you're trying to do things creatively for your ministry or for your church's ministry in general if you're brand new to the scene and you're trying to help your church get figured out um, most of the time if you have somebody that's going to be dedicated to that or if you're going to be dedicated to that you're going to have the ability to kind of figure out what's going on and what's really going to matter a lot more is your lenses um, and so that is one of the things that I think um, has been a huge game, game changer for us um, as as our church has developed this this ministry this idea of taking pictures and taking videos and trying to help people understand our context and experience um, the first lens that I bought for this was this this nice little Nikon F mount 35 millimeter 1.8 um, and I absolutely 1000% would buy that again um, this was probably my best idea when it came to buying this camera stuff and I got a gimbal and all that stuff and I love that thing it's great um, but as good as that is as awesome as it is to have like microphone all that stuff but when we got started this was my best purchase and it was the cheapest thing that i bought <laughs> and so that is that is the 
single most amazing and slightly depressing thing about all this is that the best thing that I bought was the smallest and the cheapest of all of them. And um, here is why. Um, it is really 100% due to the fact that it is a nice low f-stop. And if you don't know what that is, um, then I want to kind of explain that a little bit and then we'll kind of go forward. So on your camera's lenses, right, your lenses are capable of only a certain amount of focal distance, right? So most of the time, if you buy a camera and you get a kit lens or something like that, it's a range of certain f-stops that it can go to, right? So there are some lenses that are zoom lenses where you can zoom out in and out and you can see a certain distance, right? But a focal distance is the distance between the two pieces of glass inside of your lens, right? And so it's your ability to focus on, <clears throat> it's your ability to focus on one distance away from your subject, right? And so the idea is that the lower the number, the shallower your depth of field, which is, which is another way that people talk about this, right? The more precise your focus can be, right? And there are lenses out there that go all the way down to like 0.8, which is just stupid, right? Like unusable almost. Um, and uh, it's honestly even hard. Like I, I have trouble with my... 1.4 finding manual focus sometimes because it's not that easy like it's it's there's such a, a shallow difference between in focus and out of focus that me doing it by my eye is hard to do right and so um i typically don't do that right and so uh after i figured that out right because i can't this came with um another lens and i just don't even use that it's just not not usable right and i've used some of my um some of my wife's lenses and stuff like that that she has for camera they're great honestly especially for photography but when it came to trying to do good like better video and better photography in the room um it it became more and more apparent that i needed to be able to blur out backgrounds to be able to like really focus on what i'm trying to focus on and not do that digitally and try and like find it natively in the camera and so that's why this was huge because it made the difference it was the ability to finally get a little bit of that creamy bokeh that people are looking for and and that that really good um perfect like just looking at an image and knowing exactly what you're supposed to be looking at and um so this was a great great first purchase and it's literally i think most of them are like 150 dollars. this is actually the newest version of this um and you can get a uh you can probably get like an old school 50 um 1.8 um they call they actually even call them a nifty thrifty 50 um probably for like less than 100 bucks this one i think is like 125 or 150 and um 35 was a really good different distance for me um 35 millimeter um and um if you don't know what that means it just means that it's like it's a little bit further out than what most people are used to like if they pick up a camera and do all that stuff and so um that's why i went for the 50 on this one because it's just a a perfect mid difference um, for me to be able to get um, good video shots for things like an announcement video um, where I need to be able to be nice and close to somebody in our studio um, but also I can be a little further away and I actually just started using it for our live stream in our student building which is actually pretty incredible because it's high enough definition and clarity because of the f-stop um, that I can be in the like the camera can be all the way in the back of the room and we can in stream labs which is what we use to stream um, we can literally zoom in three times over um, and still have really good quality because of good glass um, and honestly I think that's one of the things that um, you can kind of see the difference right you can you can see how it would be better um, because of all that stuff um, and how that works but um, yeah another lens that I think is one that 
I'm so glad that I, I picked up. And I think it's probably pretty underrated um, for what it is. I really love Sigma, by the way. I don't know. You, you're going to realize that in this video. But um, there's just no reason to pay for Nikon money for me. Um, even people that are like really all about like the G Master lenses and stuff for Sony um, or like really getting into like Canon lenses and stuff like that, there's no reason for that um, because uh, it's just they're you're paying for the name honestly at the end of the day there's some lenses maybe there's like one or two lenses that only they make and you can't get them somewhere else and at that point i get it but um on things like this like the this lens that i use all the time this 1.4 50 millimeter i i got this one for 500 dollars, right which you know sounds pretty steep but the Nikon version of this lens costs probably like $1,200. Um, and uh, honestly, that is, that's the part that when it comes down to it, we don't realize that like that is really not worth it. <laughs> not, not when the camera body is still going to do all the same work that it's going to do. Right. And so at the end of the day, that lens is just as capable and um, yeah. But yeah, back to that other lens that I really feel like is a, just a really good purchase that one that um, I know they have it on multiple camera systems. Um, Sigma does a really great job with this. Check this out. All right, this is my Sigma 17 to 2.0, right? And um, so it's still got that really good shallow, shallow depth of field. Maybe not as good as the 1.8 or um, 1.4, right? 1.4 uh, it would be amazing to have this in 1.4 lens um, but yeah 17 to 50 this thing is so wide it is ridiculous 17 is the widest lens that I have for sure um, and uh, this is like my go-to for all those group pictures that you try to get at summer camp this is all of those things wrapped in one um, but to be able to have this lens in a constant aperture that is the difference maker right um, this thing is look how wide that sucker is dang it's nuts um, but um, that is the difference maker with this that constant aperture um, it means that when we have those big old group photos I can get everyone nice and in focus and uh, going you know all the way wide and be able to actually do something awesome with this and um, especially for video when it comes to summer camp and stuff like that capturing those big landscapes um, so the people kind of get to be there in the moment with us even though they obviously aren't there um it's huge big big deal to us for sure and so um yeah i think that's one of the things that when it comes to all of this stuff i think when we're asking the question okay well what camera should i buy um there's a lot that goes into it right like like i said there i if i could go back in time i probably would buy a different one um would i buy a different one now no no, there's no reason. The things that I think about when I'm like, ooh, that camera gear and all that stuff, it's more lenses. It's glass. It's, oh man, this would be so sweet for this moment to be able to capture those things, right? Like, I would really love like a super good like telephoto lens that has a nice low aperture. That would be awesome. Do I have $10,000 to spend on that? No, I do not. <laughs> do I have $2,000 to spend on that? Also, no. Um, but I get by with what I have, right? And I find ways to creatively make it through and, and use those things. I think that's one of the things that with um, this world, right? we're talking about church, we're talking about ministry, we're talking about doing these things so that people experience these things. It's not, it's not like we're, it's not a marketing campaign right it's not i'm not shooting a wedding i'm not shooting a sporting event right if i was doing those things i could charge somebody and say hey um i need this lens and to be able to get what you want us to produce right and you know i could feasibly charge those things or rent something um lens rental for big events like camp and stuff like that great option by the way um but 
that's the thing where I'm not charging anybody to do this stuff, right? Like this is, I'm using this for ministry to capture our moment so that people can know what God is doing. And um, I think the challenge with this is that we can be creative enough to do the right things with what we have, right? And um, if you have the ability to go and get a camera, um, like I said, like you can get this combination right here for a thousand dollars, right? Like all the way with the lens at this point, you can get this camera, this adapter ring and this lens for a thousand dollars and take fantastic pictures. There's not a camera body. Like if I went back in time and like I said, like if I wanted to go and get a full fame camera and get into Sony and stuff like that, they do not have a camera in their lineup that would cost less than this entire setup. And that's ridiculous. <laughs> and so that's the thing. It's like, there's no reason for me to think about that. There's no reason for me to think, oh, I need to go get a different camera body. Like you, you know what your budget is. Like, you know, those things, right? If you have the ability to go into get into Sony and do all that stuff, like that's fantastic. Do that. But know that the things that matter the most are your ability, right? And being able to practice and figure out what works best for you um, and glass finding the right lenses for the right situations for you. Um, and, um, you know, deciding if you want to get into videography, you might need a microphone, you might need a, a way to hold that. Right. But that's at the end of the day, like the most important things on this list are not what the right option is, right? There's no perfect camera when it comes to doing ministry, doing all this stuff. Um, there's what you're able to figure out how to use to capture the right moments. And so I hope that helps. I hope that that kind of frames this the right way for you. Um, and, uh, if you want to know more about my specific setup and, uh, how to use it and get the most out of it, um, let me know. I'd love to make more videos about that and kind of show you my process and, uh, how I've gotten to where we are. And, uh, hopefully you can go out and take this. And if you're actually in the market for a camera and you need help or whatever, something like that. Um, and, uh, or if you want the specific setup, you can, you know, let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to help and, uh, we can just go from there. But with that, you guys have an awesome, awesome day.